Hi, this is Wally Goad with Cross Company. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to assemble an SD25 control valve from Valve Oil. We are replacing a Vickers CN2 control valve that has been obsoleted. So I hope you enjoy the video and hopefully that it's helpful. Thank you. Here is the Vickers CM2 valve that we are replacing. And here are all the parts to assemble this SD25 control valve. They are labeled. You have the inlet cover, work sections, outlet cover, the spools, the relief valve, blanking plug, the direct pressure relief valve, the port reliefs, and the A-side spool positioners and the tie rod kit. Now the easiest way to assemble this control valve is to start with the inlet section and lay it on its side and put the tie rod kits through like you can see. Now you notice the O-rings on the laying there on the table. I will show you where those go to next. As you can see the O-rings are in place on the inlet cover and the reason we stack it this way with the O-rings facing up so they don't fall out each working section will have O-rings on them too. I have installed the first working section and you can also see all O-rings are in place We'll do this two more times because it is a three section control valve. The inlet, work sections, and the outlet are all together now. I have the tie rod kits through the valve and now I will begin to torque down the tie rod. Now the torque on the tie rod kit is 36.88 foot pounds. Now that we have the tie rod kits torqued down, we will install the port reliefs and the relief valve blanking plug. Now the port relief valves go in each individual section. There's two per section. Now, for the relief valve blanking plug, goes on the back side of the inlet cover. We are now going to install the direct pressure relief valve. It will go in here. The next part of the puzzle is the spools. We will put the spool in each section, and you'll see here in a second. How they all go in. With this particular layout my customer has requested to put the spool in in an odd way. The handles will be on the back side of the control valve. Now very important that we don't forget the o-rings and the brass spacers. I will show you how to properly install those. Notice the o-ring goes on first and then you have the brass spacer. What's important is you put the brass spacer correctly onto the spool. You see the chamfer is towards the work section so make sure you do that in the correct manner. Once we have all the o-rings and brass spacers in place we will attach the spool side positioner. As you can see here in the first working section there I've got one on and I'm getting ready to attach the cap the middle section I don't have it assembled yet and the third section is missing the brass, o, uh, brass ring. Once I get that on then we can finish assembling the valve. Mm -hmm. Now that we've have installed the positioner kits on here. 
Now we can install the port plugs for P, C, and T. These will be uh, torqued to about 110 foot-pounds. And once that's done, the valve is assembled and I can take to the customer. The finished product looks like this. And here is the valve we're replacing. Old. New. To finish this control valve out, we have to assemble the dust plate. The customer has chosen not to have a lever, so we have to protect the spool with the dust plate. Now the dust plate is con consists of the rubber seal here and the plate. Once you get that bolted in, and I get this one done, we will have a finished product to deliver to the customer.